Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to speak about hooking up your hardware to Core Gadget. Like in my very first Core Gadget 2 video, I showed a little hardware jam, and ever since then, I've had a lot of people asking how I hooked up my synthesizers to Core Gadget. Now, because of that, I'm labeling this video how to hook up your hardware to Core Gadget, but in reality, this can, will work with any iPad program, even beyond Core Gadget. So even if you don't use Core Gadget and you want to know how to hook up your hardware to maybe a sequencer or something that you have on the iPad, this will help you out still. One thing I was pleasantly surprised about when entering the iPad world was how many interface options you have already on the iPad. I was really blown away. I thought it'd be super limited. I thought your options would be really small and I was completely shocked and I was completely wrong. You basically have two real options when it comes to audio interfaces and iPads. You have things that are built purely for the iPad, kind of like the iRig and various slew of options that are like the iRig. They range everywhere from, you know, 80 to $200 have direct lightning connection so you don't even need any type of adapter some of them you still need a camera connection kit you know because they're usb you need to connect them by a usb into your lightning adapter but they're also lightweight and small they take absolutely no power source and your ipad can power them themselves they're generally more limited compared to something you'd have on at home or on the computer when it comes to audio interfaces but they're small they're portable and they take no secondary power. They can just kind of fit in your bag and go, and they're good for that aspect. Me, I was planning on using my iPad a little bit more professionally, and I wanted to see if it was possible to use full-blown interfaces on the iPad. And as I researched, I realized, yes, you can use full-blown interfaces USB that you would normally use on your computer on the iPad. Almost any class compliant USB interface can be used on the iPad. The biggest rule of thumb that I have found with this is power consumption. You want to make sure if you are going to go past just the general built for iPad interfaces and you are going to go into something that's more that you would see at home on the computer, like a I have a Focusrite 18 i8 hooked into my iPad. If you want something of that nature, my best advice is it being class compliant and it having its own power source because the iPad is limited on how much power it can give out compared to a laptop or a home computer. So you really want something that powers itself and plugs itself into the wall. That is why I got the Focusrite 18i8 that has its own power plug. There are some Focusrite USB interfaces that do not plug into the wall and rely off something else to power it. I made sure not to get one of those. This just adds to the whole stability of the system. I heard the iPad can't even power some of the things that don't have its own power source. So it's just best to get an USB interface that plugs itself into the wall if you are going to go bigger on your interface for the iPad. Once you have a class compliant interface that works with the iPad. And if you are going bigger, you make sure you get one that has its own power source. If it doesn't have a direct lightning to go into your iPad, you will need some sort of adapter. A camera connection kit will give you lightning to USB capabilities and that will get you connected to the interface. My advice is to take it one step further, go to the Apple store, ask them about the adapter that's has the USB and lightning power connection into one adapter. I think the things around 40 bucks, so it's not a cheap adapter. You know, Apple adapters aren't cheap, but the thing is this gives you the ability to have power running to your iPad while USB is running to the interface. So you can have constant power going to the iPad, which gives it more stability. And then it's not draining power because of all your apps and everything connected to it. If all these things are going to drain a little bit of power from it on top of all the music apps that you're using, having it plugged into the wall on top of it 
into the interface is huge, 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 and adds a lot of stability to your iPad. And if you're using an iPad Pro, it turns it into a really, really powerful machine and it can handle a lot. So once you have your interface and you have your adapter you need to connect it, USB transmits audio and MIDI from the iPad to the interface. So just connecting the USB from the iPad to the interface is all the information you need outward. After that, just continue the connections from the MIDI out to your synthesizers. And if you need to MIDI split it, split the MIDI. And at that point, you're hundred percent hooked up from your hardware to Core Gadget 2 or any other iPad sequencing program you want to use. I really hope this video helps some people in understanding how to connect hardware to their iPad or Core Gadget 2. I got a bunch of people asking and I felt like I had to make this video. I really wanted to make it yesterday, guys, but you know, life just got really busy. And then by the time I came home, I really was tired and I just passed the hell out. So I wasn't really planning on making this video. I kind of just threw it in there because of everyone who wanted it. I will continue on my Core Gadget 2 journey from here. So until next time, stay positive, stay creative, support each other, and peace.